Really? Life continues even when the podcast is on. Oh, man, we, we look so unprofessional with Pew today. Look, man. How would you feel? Like that was that like, was a dose of reality. If, we, you, if I did the whole podcast like this and just talked while I was texting, that would be like real life. Okay, that's also, you two loves me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're the Pen and Pal podcast. We're on YouTube, and we're talking about our review, our nope. preview episode. Yep. Did review preview episode for February the nineteenth. So. Semi okay week, not a huge week for comics, not a big week for me. January, well, it's a big week, but it's not a big week. January flew by, but February's creeping. Yeah, uh, February's this is this is creeping a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you guys getting so. that too? I, I kind of feel like this month has been a little. I mean, yeah. I'm enjoying it. I like slow months. It makes my life last longer. February's but, creepy, but yeah, yeah it's been a it's been a slow walk. February, <laughs> which um, scares me because March normally is the slow walk month, and yeah. if if we get if we get the sprint of March, I'm gonna be like, whoa, yeah. Not ready for that. April looks to be massive. February is going to, I'm sorry, March is going to be a big month. Oh, I April wasn't talking about comics. I was just talking about my feelings. Oh, in general. Year. Yeah, I was just having conversations. conversation. So, yeah, April's going to be here and uh, your birthday's coming up too. And yours yeah, is the day the after day after, my, that's yeah. right. And then we have free comic book day the yeah. next day. God bless. Yeah. It's going to be a fun weekend. Okay, so. Ready for start? me to start this part? Yes. Hello. And welcome to the Printed Panel Podcast. I'm David. And I'm Gary. Guys, it is a February the 19th previews episode. Whew. This isn't a huge week for me. This is okay week for me. There's some good stuff, but not a whole, not a ton. So I'm going to try a couple new things. But uh, yeah, let's... Uh, Start with the indie stuff, man. What you got? So Aftershock has God Killers number one. So I missed that in my list. And that is one I plan to pick up too. You see, if you're watching on YouTube... What you're seeing right now is me grabbing my book and my pen <laughs> and writing out that I have an Aftershock book to pick up. This happens from time to time where I may miss something or he misses something. Yeah. And we can actually pick it back up. And there's not a whole lot where David goes, oh, crap, I need to get that one. And there's not a whole lot where I need to do it either. But when they are, it's We're like, how did I miss that one? You know, but God Killers number one looks very good. It's um, a Cthulhu in Desert Storm kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Bo- Abdul El Hazarid is involved, and for those of you who are H.P. Lovecraft fans out there, having book. Abdul El Hazarid actually named in a book is is pretty great. So um, we have Boom has Firefly number fourteen, which is the continuation of the uh, the Ma Reynolds. Story. Ma Reynolds, uh, and of course, um, you know, Dark Horse, of course, also has um, the Hellboy and BPRD, the Return of Effie Cobb number one. This one may get pushed as well. I kind of feel like it probably will because um, the last Hellboy book did get pushed. I'm not sure what the push was. I, I think it was a production issue. So, uh, anything from, anything from IDW? I do have something from IDW. What is your IDW? TMNT number 103. Nice. I'm really, really, really liking the current TMNT run. This, uh, I wish they'd call it like Mutant City or, or something like that. I, do they have a name for their line? Or? I, I don't. If there is, is one, there I haven't, yeah. So we've had City at War and all that good stuff. I don't know what this arc uh, is called because I honestly have just been uh, enjoying the issues. IDW, I've got uh, Star Trek Year 5, Issue 10. It's been pretty great. This is, of course, leading up to the this crew stopping on this Enterprise and um, going on. And then, of course... Excuse you know, me. Kirk becomes Admiral, and they all kind of take a break, and Spock does his Kulinar thing. So, yeah, it should be kind of fun. This is before... What, what's, what's Kulinar? Kulinar. That's when he... Uh, uh, <laughs> so you look at me like... like no, I fantasy. really am genuinely want to know. So, uh, and, and when you are of one mind uh, on, the, on the planet Vulcan, and you literally want to devote yourself to the purest logic, you do what's called Kulinar. And that's what Spock does. Before he rejoins Starfleet in Star Trek, the first Star Trek motion picture movie, um, Star Trek motion picture, he, the first movie he, he is doing Colonar, and he realizes because there's a, there's a grave threat to the universe, he can't. He, get, he, he actually denies it and goes back and rejoins. So um, this is all leading up to that. Cool. Anything from Image? I have two things. What did you got from Image? Deadly Class 43. Okay, yeah. Which I really feel like it's coming toward an end. I mean, we may get 50 issues out of it, but, um, but yeah, Deadly Class for sure. And then Undiscovered Country number four. See, I've got Middle West number 15 
And of course, I'm on the stump number one. I get this is that book that looks so ridiculous. I can't wait to read it. So essentially, Benj uh, so uh, your wife's eventually going to tell you. No. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln is the first one I think that just to decide that the the presidential race needs to be decided by a boxing match to see a bare a bare knuckle boxing match to see who wins to win the presidency. I'm super excited. This looks ridiculous, and I can't wait. This reminds me of Shirtless Bear Fighter all over again. I'm going to keep going with that one. Uh, Titan Books has Blade Runner number six coming out as well. Excited about that one. Skin job. Yeah, pretty much a yeah, skin job. Um, that's pretty much it for independent. Anything from you? Anything dynamite or anything like that? No. Nobody page this week? Nobody page this oh, week. Oh, wow. That's okay. I think we're in a little bit of a hiatus. They kind of rush to issue 10. It's like yeah. we got one every two weeks for a while. Yeah. And suddenly just. Okay. Interesting. Unless I missed something, which is possible. Do you do Marvel or DC? We always do DC first. Okay, so. The highly anticipated Batman number 89 Woo! comes out this week. We are leading up to War of the Jokers. Oh, yes. And this is Joker's new girlfriend. This is her first appearance. And I can't remember. So pick name. up two copies of Batman um, 89. If you can find them. Because, so here's our LCS. Richard's pretty good about making sure he gets extras. Uh, because, when, especially when we know something big is coming. And so he has extras coming of, I think, cover A and cover B this week. But here's the catch. Everyone's going to want both covers because it's a new appearance. It's a first appearance. Subscribers obviously get theirs first. It's going to that's just going to go from there. I know that I have heard that the other comic book stores in the area are all basically coming up short because they're realizing they've had more demand. Didn't know it was coming. So it's going to be an interesting issue. Just going to see where see what happens. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about this book. Tinian or Tinian has been doing, doing a great job. Uh, Deceased Unkillables number one comes out this week. I really enjoyed the regular Deceased series. I want to see. I read the course of the little one shot that they did. I'm excited for this one too. This is the everyone left over that didn't get killed and it's still surviving. So, uh, flash forward number six is this week as well. Which you say I want? I think you should because this is a first appearance. This is basically Wally West. The rumor, of course, is Wally West takes over the Morbius chair. So the other, the other Wally Mo Mobius. West Mobius. Mobius yeah, I wasn't Mobius. correct. Sorry, yeah. Mobius. The yeah. other cool thing that I've seen, and I forget what it was, is uh, a, a very cosmic-looking Wally West with Doctor Manhattan's uh, symbol on his forehead. So this may end up being key issues for things that are coming next in the the greater DCU. Yeah, we we we're seeing these indications, and we see it, you know. Freaking Scott Snyder needs to stop tweeting stuff like Secret Crisis, and then oh no, Donny no, no. Cates <laughs> retweeting it. The Secret Crisis is real. Shh, don't tell anybody. I mean, come on, really? I, I, mean, I think I, I think there's this I think there's this this big hoods <laughs> like oh Marvel DC oh Secret Crisis thing going on, and and I love it. <laughs> For those of you listening just on the podcast, you probably really ought to whip over to YouTube real quick and see the goofy <laughs> thing I just did. It, it really was worthwhile. So I'm, I'm ho I am literally am hoping that um, there is a secret crisis. I think it's time. For oh, I think Marvel. it's going to happen much faster than we think. I, I think next I, year or this year. I think legitimately they're crazy not to because there's been a long time since the mini crossover. I, I have a theory, and this is 100% my theory. I think DC has already been bought by Disney. I think it happened quietly in the back room, and I think when it happened from, was when Bendis went to D.C. I don't think it was a betrayal. I don't think it was anything of the sort. I think very quietly in backroom deals, <laughs> Marvel owns Marvel owns D.C., and, and they are building to... A crossover. A crossover that will be the reveal of a shared uh, universe. And I think what will happen is you'll have... You'll have the Marvel U, the DCU, and the Amalgam, and they won't call it that, but that's what it'll be. The Amalgam Universe, where some heroes exist. And Can in you this... imagine the pandemonium? The absolute freak out of the comic book universe to, to, to have under one roof Batman and Spider-Man. One roof Superman and Hulk. Uh, dude, all I'm saying... X-Men... All I'm saying... Is and Justice League. I mean uh, that that uh, Joker doesn't survive the first year because Punisher kills him, <laughs> and Punisher doesn't survive past that because Batman kills him, uh, or Batman's, Batman's or Batman is killed as a result of him being taken down. Because Deathstroke kills Punisher. I'm sorry, it happens. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see that absolutely. So or vice versa. No, let's be honest. I can see vice versa too. Nah, so Frank's not a metahuman, unless it's Cosmic Frank. 
God, like Frank. My God. Galactus in the That's DC a Donny Cates creation. That is so a Donny Cates. I can't, Cates. I can't <laughs> mock it. Oh, man. Damn it. Um, all right. So, uh, He Man, the Masters of Multiverse number four comes out this week. Very excited about that. I know you have been you laugh at me every single time. I just am smiling. It's goofy, but it's so much fun. It makes so, me so anyway. happy. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you have next? Joker Killer, Killer Smile. Three uh, of three. Three of three, and I don't know if I'm excited for the end of this. This is Jeff Lemire. Jeff Lemire, sorry. Jeff Lemire, whatever. Hassan Pfeffer Incorporated. <laughs> uh, so, so in, in issue two, you realize the therapist is nuts, and now we're going to get... The, the Joker has driven him nuts. Or not. Either he has gone nuts on his own and is blaming it on the Joker, or this is one great Joker con. And, it's a hell of a good con. And 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 in a way, I'm I'm kind of dreading the end of three because I was bored with it at the end of issue one. By by the center of issue two, I'm like, this is really pretty good. And and now I, the the wrap up's going to be good. It'll be good, but it'll be sad. I like it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Justice League 41. Justice League 41. Yeah. Uh, so I said I was going to drop Justice League when Snyder exited. I read issue 40. It was excellent. Um, it was absolutely excellent, and it set the Eradicator up as their next their next villain. And this is more Justice League in the line of the League dealing with, with threats without any real consequence to the major parts of the universe. Eradicator and the Daxamites? I mean, da- am I right on that? The Daxamites, but they're really Kryptonians now, right? Because they've been they powered up. Because he's essentially powered them into Kryptonians. Yeah. So. And and God, I'm looking forward to issue 41. I think it'll be a fun read. So it should be interesting. Um, Legion of Superheroes number four. I know you're not doing this because I know you're not a big Ben. I don't know, fan. man. Last time when when nope, Damien can't be in the future. <laughs> <laughs> they actually drugged Damien and put him back where he was supposed to be. Like, no, 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 he can't be here. Why not? Because he can't be here. He's Damian Wayne. He's Damian Wayne. He could it's destroy like, everything. It's like bringing the Antichrist into the future. Yeah. What did we say? Don't mess with the Borg. <laughs> so uh, that's the one rule. Um, and then last but not least for me, it'll be Wonder Woman, uh, Dead Earth number two. I know the art on it is bad for you. The story was fantastic. It really was good. So we're we're in the middle of the the Dennis Culver Justin Greenwood interview. <laughs> and they both dropped Wonder Woman Dead Earth. That they love. As, as, uh, that they loved it. And I, my boss recently described me as an uncultured savage. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> one of them Tennessee hillbillies that don't know nothing about nobody. Wow. And I'm listening to that conversation. And you I'm have, like, like, you maybe, have a bunch of art books at home, don't you? Maybe, like, literally art books. Maybe I am an uncultured savage. It's entirely possible because I hated Dead Earth. I was like, this is crap and I don't want no part of the it. Story, again, the story was excellent, but again, the art is almost primitive and it's it's, it's hard. So, I do want to read the story because, honestly, I, I think the I think Black Label stuff needs to be supported very much so, because if not, it's just going to fall apart. Well, so, so far I haven't liked the question and I haven't liked Wonder Woman, but literally everything else I'm, I'm, I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I don't consider Joe Hill true Black Label. That's no, its own imprint. No, no. It's its own imprint. Joe, have, Joe Hill could just be like, hey, Dad, can I start my own comic book company? And they, he'd be like, sure, son. They, they have it under, well, he can afford it on himself. Um, they have it under Black Label because there's no Vertigo anymore. If it were, if Vertigo still existed, it'd be a Vertigo Press thing. Instead. Which is dumb because they're they're still doing Sandman and all of that under. But it's not Vertigo; it's Black Label. But it's Black Label, and and it allows it to tie into the bigger DC universe. I mean, why not just why not just call it all DC and be done with it? I don't, I don't know. I so, guess it says this is Elseworlds. This but. is this is the thing that we haven't seen that they've been talking about is for there's supposed to be a Wildcats book. Hey, maybe the Secret Crisis will bring it all together. <laughs> Maybe we'll finally get a Wildcat. Well, Jim Jim Lee owns Wildcats, and it's a DC property now, and he is a DC employee. Why would he not want to do Wildcats? But apparently, they couldn't get the support for Wildcats within the within DC. So maybe that's part of what we'll see in the Secret Crisis is Wildcats. Very because they keep playing down the thing that worked about Wildcats in the '90s, and that was um, was her name Voodoo? Yeah. Voodoo and and the silver chick basically being naked yeah. through the whole book. I, there was a whole lot of sexual innuendo, and there was a whole lot of uh, suggestive nature to that book, and and it worked. It was a very sexy book, and even Grifter. Oh yeah. With, if you were attracted to men, no matter your gender, 
Grifter's a good looking dude. Yep. And, and well, if you take him, that stupid red no, mask. No, no, that was the thing. That was the that was the splash page. Was him in the mask with the shirt blown away, <laughs> and he's just rippling, you know, pecs and abs. Okay. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, am I making you uncomfortable? It's so anyway, the truth. That's what Wildcats was. I know. But anyway, but, so, and it was a really good story we wrapped in sexual innuendo. So that's that's one of those books that the, the DC has talked about that we may see eventually because of this. Hopefully, yeah. Black Label. So I, I want to see the Kelly Sue DeConnick Wonder Woman they've been talking about. So because she's an amazing writer, I'd love to see her do Wonder Woman. I think that would be a fantastic take. Okay. Um, Marvel. Yeah. Was there anything else for DC? Was that it? Nope. Okay. I have three little books. Okay. What you got for Marvel? Uh, Conan the Barbarian number thirteen. Okay. Excellent. Is, Captain America. This is where Jim Zub picks up, right? Yeah. Um, Captain America number 19 also comes in about that same time. Should have come in before Conan. Well, that's fine. It's it's good. Uh, Daredevil number 18. Mm -hmm. Very Chip excited Zarsky. about that. Yeah, Chip Zarsky, man. Great writer. Well, apparently in issue 21, we see the, the original Daredevil red costume comes back. All red. Not the armor thing anymore. It's just the pure red costume. Very excited about red that. Red spandex. Yeah, red spandex. There, there we go. go. Uh, Fantastic Four 19. Yeah. Fantastic. Building toward the new Fantastic Four at issue 21. That's all I care about. That's going to be fun. Uh, Marauders number eight. Oh, yeah. Can't, can we can't. see what's coming with Kitty? Can we get an answer on Kitty now? If he can we get an answer on if Kitty? If Jerry Dugan doesn't give us one more episode, uh, one more issue without the 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 resolution of Kate Pride and her drowning. I'm going to Boston to find him. I'm just saying. She gets her ass kicked. <laughs> new Mutants number seven. Oh, God, I can't wait. We finally see what happens in space. <laughs> what the hell is going to do? <laughs> Fuck uh, Valkyrie Jane Foster number eight. Yes. And crazy. Wolverine number one. Wolverine number ben one. Ben Percy's Wolverine. Ooh. Volume seven. In, interesting. Is it really volume seven? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So so we had this conversation, and you guys will see why in a minute. We'll, we'll get on to, we were looking at its price point. Um, and, and I checked one of the websites that I consistently get information from. And yeah, volume seven. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean it's been going on for a long time. This is, it's interesting that of course the good thing is now, now when you look at it when you see the number one you'll also see a legacy number underneath. So it will be continuing. I don't know which number this will be. I'll be honest, I can't. It's in the three hundreds. Yeah. It's three fifty two. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> I believe you. There there are three hundred fifty total. There were three hundred fifty total issues of Wolverine at the end of I think volume six. Hmm. 351, 352, somewhere oh. right in there. I might be wrong. We'll we'll see no, I, Wednesday. I, honestly, I didn't know. So, well, we talked about this earlier. We did the review episode. Doctor Strange doesn't have a legacy number, but it's Dr. Right. Period Strange and not Doctor spelled out Strange. So that's why there's no legacy now because this is a different line, and it's Which kind of pisses me it's off. It's not Sorcerer we, Supreme; it's Surgeon Supreme. We know that it won't last forever. This is going to be it won't. A, twelve issues. 20 this issues, and what will happen like is he'll get his hands hurt again. He can't be a Surgeon Supreme anymore. And, I mean, it's coming. Yeah, back to legacy we go. Yeah. So and that's and that's okay too. That's okay to have an offshoot because. This is this is what comics are all about. My prediction is there becomes two versions of him. There's one of him that's the Sorcerer Supreme, and one of him that's the Surgeon Supreme. And the Surgeon Supreme cannot do magic, and the Sorcerer Supreme is the guy making stuff in his lab and giving it to people. And they'll anyway. Sorry. No, but it's, it's that. A, but that's a good prediction. I predicted it. I predicted it. I mean, we, but you called the Fantastic Four thing. You've called several things that we've been like, "This is." I see this coming. Yeah. I see this as something that's really real. Um, it's that or it's his girlfriend, the Zelma. sexy alien. No, sexy alien girlfriend. Oh, yeah, not Zumba. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's mad at him anyway. Yeah. All oh, women are mad at him. What did he do? Is he that big He's a jerk? kind of a douche. He's a jerk. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, man. Top four? So, <laughs> but it's not. If you put if you put the one yeah, in there. Yeah, this is... So, listen. We, books we, on a budget. We, we call it top four, but truthfully, the, the concept came from books on a budget. Right. If you could only had twenty dollars to spend per week, what would you buy? Right. We wanted to talk about what was important from the reading perspective. If you were if you were going to buy key issues as an investor, whatever, they can hear my voice. Trust me, they can do that. Um, <laughs> and and what you would go for. So books on a budget is on the premise of twenty bucks, including tax. Yes. Bam. So, what's your number one? My number one is Undiscovered Country number four. I'm extremely excited about that book. I, I really, really. I'm glad am. you are. So I. It's been fun. it's been a fun book so far. I know that's not your favorite out there, but you still like reading it. <laughs> I go so it's back and forth. I go so back and forth on this book. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I'm I'm reading it for Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben, we mentioned you again, buddy. So yeah, don't worry. Um, what's your number one? Batman eighty nine. Oh, that's my number two. Oh 
God, I so cannot wait. I have been. I am more excited. I did not think I could be more excited about Batman. I'm so glad we're away from the Batcat issues. This is a this is a penultimate issue too. This is going to be first appearance. This is going to be a big deal. So yeah, I I more than likely I won't buy both A and B. Did you covers. say Joker's girlfriend? Yeah. And I can't remember her name, and I apologize for the for the world out there. Not Harley Quinn, apparently. Nope, not Harley. She, this is a new female, and apparently this one is more vicious than Harley ever was. This one is like more of a match for Joker than Harley ever could have been. So this should be pretty interesting. I'm I'm interested. Yeah, and of course my number three is going to be. Oh, what's your number two? Your number two is Wolverine number one. Ah, uh, there we go, guys. There's there's only going to be three books this week from both of us because yep. we're both wanting to pick up Wolverine number one by Ben Percy, yep. and it is a seven dollar and ninety nine cent issue. Now it is double sized. Um, it's double issue. It really is. This is. I mean, hopefully we have lots of uh, lots of sex scenes with Jean Grey, and this one must be good. <laughs> That's clearly tongue in cheek. That's not going to happen. Uh, Actually, it, it there may be some. I think there's. I think we're going to some start indication. More. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to start seeing more of this with Gene. Whereas Scott is a man divided between Gene and Emma, and kind of conflicted about which one he wants. Wolverine's not. Nope. He wants Gene. Gene. He's always wanted that redhead. The redhead was the first love of his life. This one, she looks just like her. Yeah, this is this is a big deal. Which I absolutely <coughs> hated in Origins. Like, couldn't we have an original character? Ugh. And what's your number three? Wolverine, or excuse me, TMNT 103. <laughs> my number three is Wolverine number one. So, yeah. I, can we, I saw that coming. Uh, and my number four would have been... Nope, this, nope, nope, nope. No, you got 20 bucks. Been. Don't even throw it out there. Okay, fine. No, I don't, no, I don't mention. That gives us so we're we're doing a segment with this guys. If you're if you're not checking us out on YouTube, please go and at least see the unique stuff. We do two things right now that are unique to YouTube. We do who's is bigger, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a real quick visual breakdown of who read more books that week. Every, it, spoiler alert: every week it's Garen. Um, I'm the more discerning. I do of the work two at a comic book somewhere. store. You know that, right? I mean, yeah, I don't know that that has anything to do with it. <laughs> okay, so. Um, but the but the interesting part of that is we started a new thing this week where we're we're taking a look at books on a budget by actually showing what we've got. Yeah. And if we had changes we would make after having read everything. So right now what we're doing is on the previous episode we're trying to predict the best books. The four that you actually need, or in this case the three you actually need. Right. Maybe next week I may go, Oh wow, Wolverine number one's horrible. And I would have rather picked up these two books instead, Justice League and blah, blah, blah. So I sincerely doubt you're going to say that. <laughs> I, I, doubt it too, I think but. your three, especially with Team NT for you, I think is literally going to be your, the best. I think, honestly, these three, the only thing, no, I'm not even going to talk about replacing on the show or country. I can't do that because I, I, I love this book. <laughs> literally love this book. So, you and Ben. Uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. <laughs> All right, man. You got anything else? This was pretty great. So thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, YouTube, for, for watching as well. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's always fun doing this, and hopefully you guys can uh, kind of see some fun stuff. But uh, if you have any questions, any questions, any comments, please send them our way, printedpanelpodcast.com. There's merch out there now. You can see T-shirts with our faces on it. You guys, I want to be 100% clear, and, and I, I really wanted to say this. We keep talking about merch. We keep putting up stuff. We don't expect you guys to make us rich by buying merchandise. Wait, I, wait, wait. wait. Uh, no, wait, stop, wait. stop, stop. Don't cut in on this. We really are putting it out there as an awareness device. We got, we've got, we've got stickers, you know, rocking, rocking the sticker on the binder on the back of my laptop. All this other stuff, because we want to get our name out there. We want to be able to promote. And one of the things that you do when you want to promote something is you you throw your picture on it and you put it out in the world, at least in capitalist U.S. Right. So. Yeah. Guys, don't think that we're trying to do a shameless money grab. We're really not. We want the podcast to be out there, and one of the ways that we're trying to do that is to, to just get our faces and our and our voices out. To there. me, it's just fun. Literally, I mean, I, do I expect anyone to actually buy a duvet cover with our face on it? No, absolutely not. I, I don't know that I would buy a duvet cover. Well, I might. No, 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 no duvet covers. No, no, no. Definitely pillowcases though, because those are kind of fun. <laughs> Something very wrong with you, sir. But uh, but no, get some t-shirts and stuff. These are fun, and wear them to cons, and people look and go, "What the hell is that?" Also, also <laughs> at some point in time, I'm sure we're going to order our own set to be giving away stuff from the show. I mean, it's more, oh, yeah. it's more about promotion than it is about merchandise. Now, I'm not. <laughs> please do not take that as I'm ashamed to make money. I'm not, <laughs> guys. I want us to be the biggest podcast on the internet, and us to be out there being the printed panel, you know, and people. 
selling out the Civic Coliseum to watch us do it live. But um, I, the point the podcast of, live that's what, that's what you meant. No, watch us do it live. I said what I meant. <laughs> Am I known for mincing words? No. No, uh, you are not, sir. No, you are not. But you're not, yeah, you're don't not mince words. Don't feel like that we're. <laughs> I don't want to get the impression out there that we're like buy our merch because we're awesome. And hey, I hope you're following the Facebook page. I try to post things on. Well, actually, Heather, David, and I try to post things on the page that are constantly trying to do something different. We talked about the J.J. Abrams delay on um, on issue three and four of. Oh, no, I'm sorry, four and five of uh, Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man. Uh, we talked about <laughs> Secret Crisis. It's coming. Secret Crisis. Is coming. We talk about. We, we try to talk about fun things. You got to wear a hoodie. <laughs> We're gonna talk about. We're gonna do our secret. We're gonna do our Secret Crisis secret special. Cabal with the crisis. Hoodie. Yeah. Uh, we talk about these things because honestly, there's a fun stuff. I mean, we, if there's <clears throat> someone famous who has passed away, or if there's a new creative team or whatever, I'm going to talk about it. Um, yeah, and and honestly, we are going to start having more people do reviews with us too. We've had a lot of people who've shown some interest in reviewing some comics, and we're off some more of those things out there too. So, Many uh, specials to come. Yeah, yeah, we're having fun with this, and it's not just reviews anymore. We're we're going to do a crossover event with another podcast, and we have some fun stuff coming up. So. Yeah. And I debate on us having a monthly not safe for work special. So a lot of those things that we want to save that are that are a little more risque that the kids the kids don't need to hear about in as much detail. Um, I constantly play over how we can make the show get better and I think that's one of the things we can do. But until then guys, thanks for listening. Thanks, man.